Question 1. What are plugins in Nagios? Answer. Plugins are scripts, Perl scripts, shell scripts, etc. that can run from a command line to check the status of a host or service. Nagios uses the results from the plugins to determine the current status of hosts and services on your network. Once you have defined plugins I will suggest you to explain why we need plugins. Nagios will execute a plugin whenever there is a need to check the status of a host or service. The plugin will perform the check and then simply returns the result to Nagios. Nagios will process the results that it receives from the plugin and take the necessary actions. Question 2. What is Nagios and how it works? Answer. Nagios is an open source system and network monitoring application. Nagios runs on a server, usually as a daemon or service. Nagios periodically run plugins to monitor clients. If it found anything warning and critical it will send an alert via email or SMS as per the configuration. The Nagios daemon behaves like a scheduler that runs certain scripts at certain moments. It stores the results of those scripts and will run other scripts if these results change. Question 3. What are ports numbers Nagios will use to monitor clients? Answer. Port numbers are 5666, 5667 and 5668. Question 4. Explain main configuration file and its location. Answer. Resource file. It is used to store sensitive information like username, passwords without making them available to the CGI's default path, slash user, slash local, slash nagios, slash etc, slash resource, CFG. Object definition files. It is the location where you define all you want to monitor and how you want to monitor. It is used to define hosts, services, host groups, contacts, contact groups groups, commands, etc. Default path colon slash user slash local slash nagios slash etc slash object slash CGI configuration file. The CGI configuration file contains a number of directives that affect the operation of the CGIs. It also contains a reference the main configuration file. So the CGIs know how you've configured nagios and where your object definitions are stored. Default path slash user slash local slash nagios slash spin slash Question 5. Nagios administrator is adding 100 plus clients in monitoring but he don't want to add every CFG file entry in Nagios.cfg file he want to enable a directory path. How can he configure directory for all configuration files? Answer. He can able to achieve the above scenario by adding the directory path in Nagios.cfg file. In line number 54 we have to add below line CFG underscore DIR equals slash user slash slash local slash nagios slash etc slash object slash monitor Question 6. What is Nagios? Answer. Nagios is one of the monitoring tools. It is used for continuous monitoring of systems, applications, services, and business processes etc. in a DevOps culture. In the event of a failure, Nagios can alert technical staff of the problem, allowing them to begin remediation processes before outages affects business processes, end users, or customers. With Nagios you don't have to explain why an unseen infrastructure outage affects your organization's bottom line. Question 7. Now, once you have defined what is Nagios, you can mention the various things that you can achieve using Nagios. Answer. By using Nagios you can plan for infrastructure upgrades before outdated systems cause failures, respond to issues at the first sign of a problem, automatically fix problems when they are detected, coordinate technical team responses, ensure your organization's SLAs are being met, ensure IT infrastructure outages have a minimal effect on your organization's bottom line. Monitor your entire infrastructure and business processes. This overall completes the answer to this question. The further details like advantages etc. can be added as per the direction where the discussion is heading. Question 8. Explain Nagios state types. Answer. The status of service or host IOK. Warning. Up, down etc. The type of state the service or host is in. There are two types of states soft states and hard states. Question 9. Explain what is soft and hard states? Answer. When a service or host check results are in a non-OK or non-up state and the service check has not yet been rechecked the number of times specified by the max underscore check underscore attempts directives in the service or host definition. This is called soft error. When a service or a host recovers from soft error that is considered as soft recovery. When a service or host check results are in a non-OK or non-up state and the service check has been rechecked the number 
number of times specified by the max underscore check underscore attempts directives in the service or host definition. This is called hard error. When a service or a host recovers from hard error that is considered as hard recovery. Question 10. Nagios says my machine is unreachable, not down. What is the difference and how it is achieved? Answer. When Nagios says a node is unreachable, a node is unreachable if Nagios is not able to find a path to the node. Now you can mention the difference. The node itself may be up but because Nagios is unable to connect to it, it has to mark this as unreachable. To achieve this, Nagios use parent-child relationship between components. Finally for better understanding explain it with an example. A router may be defined as a parent for a server. Now Nagios checks for server and marks it as down. It then checks the parent. In our example, the router. If parent is also down, then server is marked as unreachable. If parent is up, the server is marked as really down. Question 11. What is state stalking in Nagios? Answer. State stalking is used for logging purposes. When stalking is enabled for a particular host or service, Nagios will watch that host or service very carefully and log any changes it sees in the output of check results. Depending on the discussion between you and interviewer you can also add. It can be very helpful in later analysis of the log files. Under normal circumstances, the result of a host or service check is only logged if the host or service has changed state since it was last checked. Question 12. What is meant by saying Nagios is object-oriented? Answer. One of the features of Nagios is object configuration format in that you can create object definitions that inherit properties from other object definitions and hence the name. This simplifies and clarifies relationships between various components. Question 13. What are the three main variables that affect recursion and inheritance in Nagios? Answer. First name the variables and then a small explanation of each of these variables. Name. Use. Register. Now I will give a small explanation for each of these variables. Name is a placeholder that is used by other objects. Use defines the parent object whose properties should be used. Register can have a value of 0, indicating it's only a template, and 1, an actual object. The register value is never in inherited. Question 14. Explain how flap detection works in Nagios. Answer. Flapping occurs when a service or host changes state too frequently. This causes lot of problem and recovery notifications. Once you have defined flapping explain how Nagios detects flapping. Whenever Nagios checks the status of a host or service, it will check to see if it has started or stopped flapping. Nagios follow the below procedure to do that. Storing the results of the last 21 checks of the host or service analyzing the history check results and determines where state changes slash transitions occur using the state transitions to determine a percent state change value a measure of change for the host or service comparing the percent state change value against low and high flapping thresholds a host or service is determined to have started flapping when its percent state change first exceeds a high flapping threshold a host or service is determined to have stopped flapping when its percent state goes below a low flapping threshold Question 15. Explain main configuration file of Nagios and its location. Answer. The main configuration file contains a number of directives that affect how the Nagios daemon operates. This config file is read by both the Nagios daemon and the CGIs. It specifies the location of your main configuration file. Now you can tell where it is present and how it is created. A sample main configuration file is created in the base directory of the Nagios distribution when you run the configure script. The default name of the main configuration file is nagios.cfg. It is usually placed in the etc. slash subdirectory of your Nagios installation, i.e. slash user slash local slash nagios slash etc. slash.